Well, the old Sires and Dams books. Okay, I think it's supposed to be recording, so let's get underway. Um, today's session, I thought we'd look at uh, what happened in the uh, in the Black Book Seal and Timonium. I think, generally speaking, everybody's agreeable that uh, the sale was uh, uh, more than disappointing for, uh, in many ways. They had a lot of technical and physical difficulties with the site. Uh, to overcome, and the weather wasn't great. There weren't too many Europeans there, apparently, for understandable reasons. And uh, so, and the prices were down big time. In fact, there were only a couple of, uh, I don't know if there were any horses over 500,000. There was a couple uh, of 400,000 range. Uh, but I saw some stats. Mm -hmm. I saw some stats. I saw some stats that there was not that bad, was it? Or well, I don't know what <laughs> what they're looking at. The, the first session was down about 30, 35 percent from last year's first session. Mm. Um, and my general feel I, I haven't looked at the actual stats, but my general sense was that they were down quite a bit. But anyway. Uh, and it's understandable too, because if you look back last year, the big horses, the big yearlings were first crop sires like Always Be Mickey and Betting Lion. And both those sires have been generally disappointing. Always Be Mickey did have uh, two or three in the breeder's crown, but once you get past that, you get past those three or four good ones, you go a long way down to a Forty or fifty thousand dollar earlier, and to get find the next one, uh, and considering they had uh, uh, quite a few yearlings last year, or two yearlings racing this year, hundred or so, um, having four reasonably good ones uh, is not enough in most people's minds. So the always be Mickey's suffered. The betting lines also suffered because there was only one good one that showed up. He was in the Breeders' Crown, but he made a break. Uh, he was in the stretch and finished back. But um, so those two sires had quite a few in the, in the sale here. Then there was the, on the trotting side, um, one of the things that really surprised me uh, was the Muscle Hill situation. And I don't know why uh, it happened, but we had a couple, two of the top ones in the sale were by Muscle Hill. But on the other hand, if you go through this list, especially the ones that I have picked out that had good pedigrees, you'll find the one that sold for 5,000 and two others that sold for 7,000. <laughs> Yet there was absolutely nothing wrong with their pedigrees. So maybe there was something wrong with the individuals. Uh, it, it would be unusual for that to happen because Hanover does screen them for confirmation as well as pedigree. And a couple of those were actually in the, in the very first session. So there couldn't have been a whole lot wrong with them. Anyway, one of them actually was bought by a young chap from Prince Edward Island for 7,000 and is coming back to PEI. And when I spotted that, I thought, my goodness, here's a, he doesn't even have to race this horse to make a stallion out of him here on PEI. We're short of trotting stallions here. We only have two, I guess. I had two this past season. Um, well, there's only about 30 or 40 trotting mares in the maritime, so maybe you only need two, but we certainly could use a good one. And that would, to me, uh, was, uh, was one of the better ones. So. Anyway, let's have a look and see. Uh, over here is my ex my spreadsheet, my Excel spreadsheet of uh, of the ones that I picked. Um, here's the hip number, the name, the sire, uh, my rating, 
top one in the sale was rated 127. Um, ended up, I think the third top seller at 325, pretty close to that. I think the top pacer, pretty much. <clears throat> Although there might've been one more. Um, I'll get to him because he was a bit questionable. He's not on my list. And for the most part, as you go down here, you see that uh, the top ones on the list draw pretty good prices. But then you start to see some ones here that possibly because they're well over 100 points, they should have sold for more. For instance, there's a Hollywood Hanover by uh, Philly by some beach somewhere. Uh, hip number 115. Um, actually, I have a bit of a problem here. I'm trying to get statistics up on this, uh, this report and it's being very slow. So what am I gonna do here? Hold on a second. I might have to just close this out and restart it. Uh, I think that's what I'll do because I don't know how long this is taking. It's taking far too long for some, some reason. And I'll restart and we'll look at them. It's a big file and um, 800 horses that has to do all the statistics on. It should work better than that, but and it does sometimes, most of the time. Before I pull that up, well, let's go and have a look at uh, uh, Hollywood Hanover and see what she looks like. She's a pretty typical uh, good pedigree for uh, some beach somewhere. Uh, the good ones all have the same kind of a combination, cream, post happy fellow lines and an Abercrombie line. Um, there's a, a double the beach towel across the pedigree. This is the filly. It's inbred to Cam Fellow on uh, X Factor. Uh, it's a typically good pedigree for some beast somewhere. Uh, we look at the buyer's sale page and you see that she's a full sister to Hayden Hanover who made 666,000. Here's a fellow here made 166 by some beach. This is only the third one. And I would have thought that she warranted better consideration than that. Some beach somewhere has shown that he's capable of, if he gets the right mare, of putting out three or four really good ones out of that mare. Not like some sires, uh, they generally stick more to the one out of four scenario, but some beast somewhere is a, has been such a great sire that he, he's capable of uh, doubling up early on with another good one. So I thought that one was a, a bargain. Um, What did she sell for? 60,000. Oh, 60, um, here's one here, Tall Glass Hanover. This is what happens when a, when a, this, this one probably last year probably would have sold for two or 300,000. This year it sold for 45. And it, just because it's a betting line. Now, just because it's a betting line doesn't mean it's bad. Admittedly, he didn't have a great uh, first crop, but they'll all come up with a good one at some point, and this could be one of them. Um, Tall Glass is a filly. You can see that she's 
inbred maternally to Western and to Camphala. There's the Camphala line, Western Hanover line. Here's the Abercrombie line up here and the Albatross line here. This is the perfect double-double pedigree. Uh, so if you knew that and you went to the sale and you ignored the fact that it's a betting line, then you, and you get this very, very good filly for 45,000. This reminds me of a scenario I was back sometime when, when Cam Best uh, was kind of falling out of favor because he wasn't getting good ones to the races early. And there were a lot of them in Kentucky uh, this particular time. And a young fellow that I knew, friend, uh, son of a friend of mine, Bill McNeil, and who has Salzburg stables in uh, Nova Scotia. Um, his young fellow, Alan, was just getting into the game and as a trainer. And he went down there with a list of a dozen horses that I picked out for him, including five of them by Cam Best, because although Cam Best was unpopular, these were good pedigrees. And he ended up getting Liz Mara for $12,000. And that horse went on to make 2.6 million. Alan made about four or 500,000 with his first colt that he ever trained and then sold him for approximately that amount to the Burks. So that was a classic example of ignoring the fact that this is supposedly a failed sire already. Look at the pedigree. Every sire is entitled to have a great one. If the, if the pedigree is right, you get the right mare. And this is, this is a fine example of it. Now I'm not no guarantee that tall glass Hanover is going to be, be great, but on paper, pedigree wise, there's no reason why she wouldn't be. And uh, other than the hang up of betting line, but betting line, I don't know what he's, what he's showing now. But his best two are out of, one's out of a Western Hanover mare, another one's out of a Western ideal mare. So you certainly got the right sire line in the mare here. This is a Western Hanover mare. Glenn or Buck, I don't know what's underneath that Western Hanover mare, but Art's Place, Big Tower. And this one here was Camphala Art's Place. So there's the Art's Place there. So that's an interesting one there. We look at, uh, go down, we'll scroll down a few more here. Um, these ones are well priced. And, and this one perhaps is a little on the light side, considering that uh, he's got a high rating and a, and a speed rating under 150. It's an American ideal, um, shake first. American ideals are still putting them out. So here's shake first. As you can see here, here's direct scooter albatross. There's the direct scooter. Metascapper line here is the Abercrombie line up here, Metascapper. This is another double-double pedigree. That's why it's on the list and it has a good number. So what's wrong with this one? This is a call. Shake that house, 735,000. So I, I, I can't explain this. This is a, this is a first session uh, entry. So there shouldn't be anything wrong with them physically. So if anybody saw this call, you missed out on a bargain, I would say. Again, you know, it's, uh, you may be chasing this guy's money, but it's only the second American ideal and uh, out of here, and it's called, 
it's certainly worth taking a chance on for that kind of money. Here's another situation of a, of a, a sire, this next one by Trexton, no more tricks. This is in the first session. So the, the, the sale expected it to go well. So for $7,000. Now I know Trexton is in some people's mind is not particularly successful. He's just recently uh, been moved. He's going to be standing in Ontario. He's coming here, Winback's got him in Ontario. Going to stand for 7,500 US. He was in New Jersey. He was in against some tough sires there. They're not only Muscle Hill, but you've got two or three others that have gone there recently there. Yeah, Walter. You've got Walter, yes, and, uh, and, and a couple of others that, that are there that are tough, tough competition to get mares there. Uh, he'll do, he'll probably do well in Ontario because one of the things he shows in his, his, uh, in his uh, profile is a preference for uh, Nova Victory Line mares. And you just think of all those balanced images and, and uh, Angus Halls and whatever that are, that are up there. But let's take a look at them. No more tricks. And he's not the only one, not the only Trixon that uh, uh, was basically given away. There were several in there. So here's no more tricks. You can see he's an uh, interesting inbreed of civil cross here. Emil uh, Cassell, Emily Cassell is a set full sister to Conway Hall. And uh, out of a wind song soprano, who was a pretty decent mayor, in over a million dollars. But Norman, uh, yeah. general, uh, I don't know, uh, not uh, if, uh, if it's uh, <laughs> truth in it, but if it's too much Valley Victory uh, or too much uh, Gala Bell, they tend to be weak. Isn't that something? I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure. I haven't seen that. There's an awful lot of uh, good trotters with three lines to Valley Victory. And in fact, um, most of the Muscle Hills, he's a Valley Victory line. Most, uh, I think, uh, three quarters of the top twenty Muscle Hill are other mares that are inbred to a Valley Victory. In other words, have at least two more, two lines of Valley Victory maternally. Yeah, but uh, how and many of those are actually they have three lines to Valley Victory in the mares. Yeah. So I can't say, I, I, I wouldn't want to generalize on that, uh, on that issue. Uh, that's a kind of a thing that people look at and say, well, I don't, I don't like all that inbreeding. And, and from your perspective as uh, in Sweden, uh, I, th I think that's a fairly common consensus amongst the breeders there, that they don't like the, they don't like inbreeding, and they, that's why they're so they love the, uh, breeding their mares to French stallions, uh, at, with with relatively little success. I mean, uh, the success rates for those kind of uh, crosses are one percent or less, when you should be getting. 10-15% uh, generally, but uh, they still try them because that's a popular thing to do. There's this inbreeding coefficient that they, that they would lay, lay down their lives for uh, to get one as low as uh, possible. But it's silly. Um, Dean, um, Dean Hoffman went through all of the Hamiltonian winners and got out the calculations for inbreeding coefficients on them. And there were as many with high ones as there were low ones. In fact, the median was right about 11, 10 and a half for the inbreeding coefficient on Hamiltonian winners. Now that's obviously a reflection of the uh, nature of the breed in, in North America where the breeders are not as concerned about inbreeding uh, certainly not maternal inbreeding, and uh, therefore 
there, there's obviously going to be a higher percentage of uh, that type of uh, horse uh, in, the, in, in the top ranks. So it's an argument that can make on both sides. Uh, people say that uh, if you inbreed too much, you weaken the breed. And you certainly possibly, if you're doing it on a line breeding basis, uh, I would tend to agree with that. But when you're inbreeding maternally and you're using maternal lines and paternal lines and this, um, that are the same, it's not the same effect as, uh, as, inbreed, as line breeding on sideline. This Colt Norm, he is two things that go against him. One of them is, unfortunately, he's by Trixton and Trixton's got a bad rap for Colts. But the other thing is going against him. He was a June 7th Colt. The third thing is going against him. He didn't have a great video. I watched his video. Um, you know, those are three things. As far as his inbreeding, he's probably about 15% inbred. Yeah, I, I look, um, that's another aspect of it uh, that uh, uh, I'm looking at it strictly from a pedigree standpoint. I'm not looking, okay. looking at videos, videos obviously. Mm -hmm. I assume that in being a, him being in the, in, the, in, the, in the first session, he wouldn't have any physical issues, regardless of whether he had a good video or not. I've seen horses with poor videos that turn out to be great and mm. vice, vice versa. And also the, the whole general feeling uh, about tricks. To, uh, I, I give you another issue. Uh, the business, business about June, June Falls. Video. The two best horses I ever bought, one was a June 20th and the other one was a June 18th. <clears throat> one made 550,000, which at one time was the second highest maritime bread of all time. And the other filly, she raced and made about 80 or 90,000, but she set a four year old track record for over a half mile, seasonal track record of over a half mile in Flamborough Downs in Canada. So those were both, both late June 4th. They weren't just June 5th. Mm -hmm. And another one that uh, I remember very well is one that came to the island. It was a very well-bred filly, a June 20th filly by Cam's Card Shark. Uh, she was bought by uh, an island trader, taken back to the island and subsequently resold to somebody, my friend of mine, and he called me and he said, what about this filly? Should I buy her? I said, yeah, she's a great pedigree, but she's, she's a late filly. I said, don't worry about it. Just don't race her at two, or don't race her early. Don't plan on starting her before middle of August at least. And that's exactly what they did. They qualified her in August, raced her a couple of times and put her away. They took her up back up at three, sent her up to, uh, Montreal to Marcel Barrio in her second lifetime, second lifetime start up there, she tied the track record for three year old fillies and was subsequently sold for four or five hundred thousand to the Maradon Sables. And she went on to make over a million dollars. And at one time at the Midlands, she held the record for a four, four year old, four year old mare, 148. And she was a June 20th or so filly, more mayor. It all depends on how you manage them. Right. Uh, you don't have to be in all those two-year-old stakes. And that's the problem with most people. They have to get their money back early. This, this filly got his money, this, this guy's money back. He only paid $12,000 for her. Um, so, and so he, he stayed in on her. Uh, after she was sold. So he probably ended up with half a million dollars in his pocket for that $12,000 investment, less the expenses. <clears throat> involved, but what was her name, Norm? It was a blue chip, uh, trying to think of what her name was. Um, I have a problem with names these days. Okay. <laughs> I soon find out for you here. That's all right, I can, I'll look it up, I'll look it up. Um, she was by Camp's Card Shark. It ain't that difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Out of a no-nooks mare. Yeah. Which was a great cross at that time. 
Yeah. Norm, it's, it's Peter Masari. I'm having a, a little trouble on the program seeing the sire lines at the end of the whole um, thing on the right that you have there. What do you mean having trouble seeing? Popping up. In other words, on the on the pedigree. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the six um, thing, pro, um, six families. Uh, I'm not seeing what, whether it's volomite or you know the sire lines that you have listed down. Go to the pedigree. The main sheet that it comes out. Show pedigree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, far right there, sire line. Yeah. Not showing on mine. Because you haven't set it up to show it. You got to go to your settings. First thing you do when you open the program, before you even start anything, go to right. settings and set it up. That's your priorities. Where's, where's Application the user settings. settings. Okay. Display options. Uh, Check. Display the sire code of pedigrees. Check yeah. color highlights of duplicates, so oh. forth and so on. You, you got you to set it up the way you want it. And then it'll work. <clears throat> so these are all the black ones. Those are the ones that he picked out for the black ones. Mm -hmm. He recommended these ones. What is this for? Cam scars, right? Why they went cheap. Because she's Kartrick Hanover. Yeah. She was, she she was a good one. That. Yeah, she was a good one. Um, the story on her at the sale, and the reason she went so cheap, she sold for $5,000. And the reason they saw, uh, they were telling everybody when they were looking at her that she had a knee problem. She was over on her knees. Mm -hmm. She was just immature. And uh, she, she, they gave her time to straighten up and outgrow it. And she was, she was fine. Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, so the Trixtons, well, let's have a look and see what he's. Uh, see what his profile is here. He hasn't had any million dollar winners, I guess. No. But he's got some nice ones. And uh, typical for Sons of Muscle Hill, they do the same thing as Muscle Hill. Muscle Hill does best with mares that are inbred to Valley Victory. So the very best one here is inbred to Valley Victory. Inbred to Valley Victory. These are, uh, and Speedy Crown, inbred to Speedy Crown. Now these are um, TB patterns. So you see another one here, Speedy Crown, Speedy Crown. This is much the same as we saw last week with Cat Tab All. These uh, Speedy Crown line sires uh, are best, uh, do very, very well with mares that are inbred to the same sire line. It's a TB pattern. Here's another one here, another one here, here. Here, 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 and so on. And to the extent that the ones aren't, uh, this one here is, and also is a, also is a, a double double. Yep. And this is a double double here. And another one down here. Another one here. Another one here. So there's a lot of double doubles and TBs in the if you in tricks. So. To the extent that you can, you recognize that there are good tricks to be bought, and uh, when you can get something like this, there's the Speedy Crown line, Speedy Crown line here, then bred the Speedy Crown line. It's a Trixton. So why wouldn't you buy it? Obviously, they didn't want them. No more tricks for seven thousand dollars bargain. 
You could take a, you could fill the truckload up with these horses. Yeah, yeah. I'll guarantee you, there's a one, there's a will always be Mickey for eight that's on the list. Here's a uh, Sunshine Beach, it's sold for 7,000. That one came back to the island. The same guy that bought Cartrick Hanover, he bought Boracay Hanover. So watch out for that one. Yeah. Lightning might, might strike what, twice. And uh, there's a 12, and a 12, and an 8, and a 7. And if you go down here and you see, well, some of these are down near the bottom of the list, but they're still got pretty good ratings. Like here's the Muscle Hill that came to, came to PEI, Southwind Arturo. So this is Southwind Arturo, um, a muscle hill out of a chapter seven mare. Mare's got 186,000, she did pretty good. And here's the inbreeding to speedy crown maternally. It can happen here and here, or here and here, or here and here. Two of these lines, two of these three lines have to be through speedy crown to fit the pattern. But this is a, this is a TB pattern. Uh, Muscle Hill, Colt, that uh, apparently is coming back to the island. So be interested to see what he looks like, but he was first session, so he should, shouldn't have too many problems physically, I wouldn't think. Maybe he had a bad video, I don't know. Burke's got 265000 for that Mr. Sledge, the father of Patrick Mayer. So uh, let's have a look at a couple more of these. Uh, we're up here. Here's one here, an interesting one. Better's Delights were, were um, obviously popular, but this one for some reason then, up the creek. But each first session as well. Oh, that's the wrong one. Oh, that's the right one. <laughs> okay, so here's the better's delight. Um, if you look at the, the profile of better's delight, you'll see that the, there's a there's this the doubling up of um, ad, the adios line is, is pretty common in a lot of the good better lights. That's the 20, 2010, uh, Norman. 2015. Uh oh. I got the wrong one? Yeah. This one here. Same sort of thing. Inbred to Abercrombie maternally. <clears throat> and that's. Uh, a quite a common pattern for good betters delights. Uh, not totally. Uh, he tends to favor mares that have Abercrombie plus uh, an albatross line, but this particular pedigree is, of course, is inbred to albatross across the pedigree. Uh, is this a colt? Let's have a look at the pedigree here. Fifth, fifth betters delight. Yeah, there's a better's delight already. There's two, three better's delights have made over 100,000 out of this mare. There's another one here that didn't make it. Well, it's just two now and a yearly. So perhaps maybe they're thinking that the, the, the half million dollar one's not going to show up. But statistically, if you're looking, these are what you, uh, on a good cross, uh, I've said this many times. Uh, genetically, uh, they say you get one out of four that's great. 
two out of four that's that'll be decent and one bust. So there's no real great ones here. They're decent. Uh, this is too early to tell whether this is a bust and race it too. But the great one is still out there. So here's a pedigree that to my mind is worth more than what they got for it. And again, he, he was first session and Better's Delight is just a great sire, continues to produce some of the best as you, could, as you saw in the, uh, in the Breeders' Crown. Uh, what else? Any other ones you're, uh, you've got in mind that you'd like to look at? You wonder why they sold for so much or so little? 98. You have that on your list? No, no. Let me start it here. Oops. That ran. A ascending. No, you have to do it on a B. Oh, B. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A is there. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, 98, you said? Yeah. Not on the list. No. Let's look and see why. He was bid in for 30,000. Oh, he was bid in. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. First fall out of an explosive matter mare. Uh, I have some in the book that I, I go back over and I, I kind of look at them again and I say, well, did I miss something here? And I'll do a rating on them on the side. They're not on the list, but I just want to check them over again. And I, I did a second look at this one and then I decided, no, I, I didn't put them on the list. There's my markings on the, typically on the side of a catalog. <laughs> anyway, I didn't I hold it. it. Hold it against you. <laughs> I did rate them, but I didn't. Uh... Okay. No, it's fine. I'm fine. Yeah. I did rate them, but I didn't put them on the list. Here's a first full colt, which always intrigues me. And uh, uh, the first one was a filly. But in looking at it in more detail, um, it, uh, it didn't fit the, the, the profile as well to chapter seven that I was looking for. So, but every now and then I will miss one, but uh, not often. What, what didn't you like about his profile? What, what made him the out? Well, let me have a look here. I should really look at my notes when I was doing going through these, but um, I'll leave that up there for a second. I'm just going to check something here. I don't have the cost percentages up there, so it's um, <clears throat> you can check the cost percentages using the Golden Cross. See, there's um, twenty-eight 
Well, we're racing age. Eight, uh, there's eight of racing age and nothing good so far. So it's an offer across at this point. Maybe a too, little too early to, to throw somebody out throw a horse. Uh, uh, you're going like that, but it's an early indication that there's a problem. The one good one here. Big City Pearl's a nice horse. Yeah, this is the one good one. She's got 80,000, made a two year old record of 55. She's an explosive out of Conway. So, I, to the extent that this one is the same, then maybe. Uh, Let's have a look at it. To the extent that it would be the same as that, like that same kind of combination, maybe it's maybe it's worth looking at. We were looking at what number was it again? 98. 98. And the name was 98. By the book. By the book, yeah, okay. So this is a, an explosive matter, Yankee Glide, Amber Gold. Um, it's not the same pattern. It's not a, there's not, there's not a Volumite, I know a victory line here, same as the good one was. Um, so in a situation like that, I just wouldn't want to recommend it. It's just too risky. There's nothing that shows that that cross works other than on this particular one here, Big City Pearl who's out of a different, a mare with a different combination maternally. Now you can go back and you can see, uh, for instance, explosive matter in Yankee Glide, you can check that and see if the mare is any good too. But, um, <coughs> which is another consideration. Um, explosive matter, she made 24,000. There's no other explosive matters in here other than another one here that didn't race. So I wouldn't be too high on this mare as a, as a brood mare actually, as a consequence of that. I mean, she didn't take a record. She made 24,000, but and she's got a full sister that did nothing. So it's just not a scenario that gives me any confidence to make a recommendation on. A full sister norm that sold for 185,000 last year. Yeah, this one here. Which one? Yeah. Well, that's a lot of wishful thinking in that one. Yeah. But that's the problem, you see. Uh, probably a good looking filly. Great video. Um, I one of the top three. Three, one of the three top trotting sires. What's wrong? What could be wrong with it? The pedigree, the percentages. Yeah. That's what's wrong with it. Yeah. Anybody with any others they want to look at? We have to check a couple of Norm, here. I bought I bought 455. He's not on your list, but he's a nice horse. And he and he's got some pedigree. 455. Well, they all have a pedigree. <laughs> yeah, but he's got a, he's got a pretty good pedigree. And they all have some nice horses in the pedigree. Yeah. It's just whether or not they fit together. Yeah. Yellow Titan, Romeo or Romeo. That's a nice name. Yeah. Uh, first fall out of an unraced Andover Hall mare. Yeah. Uh, that Andover Hall mare has no full brothers or sisters. Well, he does have a full yeah. Has Blood a, brother, pay low the pay. Has a, has a full brother that made twelve thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, well, January fall, he must be a big, good-looking one, anyway. Yes. He looked like an aged horse, but now. Uh, not quite that big, but he's he's a nice horse. Okay, let's have a look at him. Uh, 
Well, it's, uh, you know, it's Courtney Hall and Andover Hall are cool. full siblings in blood anyway. Yep. Uh, so that's possibly a, a positive. You have a Super Bowl line here. You got two full brothers, super pleasure and American winner. Across the pedigree. Yep. Yeah. Trying to have her. Uh, yeah. He looks like a double double to me. May well be. Oh, victory. Um, no speedy crown line up here. Speedster line, though. I suppose you could stretch it to do a double that double double that way. Um, let's have a look and see what the 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 uh, profile for El Titan is. He's a top and bottom. I can tell you that. Well, again, it's a bit of a stretch there because you're you're looking at a speedster line as opposed to a speedy crown line to to Arne um, plus a, plus a speedy crown line. So, to the extent that you want to uh, call it that, uh, you can. Uh, but as you can see here, El Titan is a very typical son of Muscles Hill. Yeah. Here's inbred to the speedster line twice here, double speedster line here, speedy count. It's not speedy crown. So there is a, an Arnie Almahurst cross here, yeah. but maybe this one helps it out. But here's the double speedy crown. Here's a double speedy crown. Here's one here, one here. Uh, well, okay. Here's a Donato that has that, that similar kind of a pedigree right here. Yeah. I don't see any Andover Halls now. Here we go down Splash here. Blue chip. Oh, yeah. Splash Blue Chip is at and overhaul out of, by Donato. Yeah, here's two. Here's two out of and overhauls that are full down there are double doubles. Have the same mare, obviously. Yeah. Uh, just around the hundred thousand dollar mark. Yeah. But uh, there are no none out of hand overhaul other than this one here, out of and overhaul mares. So far, uh, by El Titan, that I've shown a promise. So let's have, we'll go and have a look at again. We can go to the Golden Cross report and see what his overall percentage is. How many? How many and overall mares has he has he been bred to? Maybe not a whole lot. He hasn't been bred to a lot of mares because he's got a fertility problem. Seems to be a problem with the Muscle Hills generally. We've got a couple of stallions in Ontario in the same boat. Sons of Muscle Hill. So he has uh, 15 of racing age and one good one. Um, there are the good ones. The two that we saw on the list here. Yeah. Uh, that are similar to what you're looking at. Yeah. But again, I it's a matter of risk reward when you're buying horses. Is the risk in this pedigree, given that it's really is not a proven cross to any great extent, um, is it? Is there, but for fifteen thousand dollars, obviously there's not a whole. You reduced the risk a fair bit. Yeah. So there's hope for this horse, I would say, but it's not on my list for just because I don't put risky horses on my list. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Hey Norman, on that pedigree on that horse with that much inbreeding, would that have been a higher rating if it had been a filly? It, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, it wouldn't change the rating necessarily. It, it would change the way you look at it. That's for sure. Um, because 
obviously there's a lot of X factor stuff going on here and the stuff that's lit up in red. In addition to the sibling cross situation, which tends to work best for a filly, uh, this is a lot like CRK Susie actually, yeah. um, who was Speedy Somali uh, and Speedy Somali's sister on this side. Um, so there, there, there's um, some pluses here. Uh, None of, the, none of these are Margaret Parrish uh, traces. They are X factor traces, but they're to, to Rosemary is a Hatteras and Texas is a Hatteras, which I think I said, I, I, we talked about last week, being associated with the good ones by uh, Nova Victor line stars like Garland Nobel and his sons. They do, do very well with mares that feature a lot of Hatteras in them. And uh, So I wish you well. I think it's a, it's a risk worth taking for that kind of money. It, and, and it would be better if it was a filly, I would suspect. Yeah. He was a nice, he's a nice call. Good. Anybody else got some that's not on my list? <laughs> I got, I got a call from somebody uh, about one that's, uh, that sold pretty high. Let me have a look at some of those. I was wondering why I didn't have them on the list. I put that somewhere. <coughs> oh, yeah, here's two or three. Here's some of the, top, the more expensive ones that, that didn't make my list for whatever reason. Well, this is the Walner. A lot of the Walners didn't make my list. Uh, the problem I have with Walner, and I may be wrong about this, because there haven't been many sires like him. Well, that's part of the problem, I guess, too. He is like, this is a speedster line, speedy crown, speedy crown, speedster line. Speedy Crown. Uh, there's Speedy Crown there. This is his maternal combinations are all speedster lines. So what do you do with a sire like that? For instance, where does balanced image fit in that? Where does Sierra Cosmos fit in a scenario like that? You can see the pine chip up here and the Valley Victory here. So maybe this is you're kind of halfway home, but really I had difficulty and I went back and I looked at to see if I could find other sires that were similarly bred. And there were two or three. And none of them were any good. None of them produced anything. Because what do you do with mares that have lines other than Speedster? Or Speedy Crown to read through. So the only Walners that I put on my list were ones that had Speedy Crown and Arnie Almahurst, Iron Dawn, Pine Chip, Reunification in them. And I think there were three. And then I said, well, that, I can't write them all off. So I went to those that had at least the combination in the top three. And if they had a Sierra Cosmos or a, uh, maybe a Super Bowl or some other thing down here, let's ignore that. The top three are the, probably the ones that have the most impact on the pedigree. So if you fit, if, if you can fit them, then maybe we'll give them a shot. So I put a few extra waters on them. This one didn't make it because there's another line interfering here about Stemmons line. Now I may be wrong on this, but history tells me that this kind of a sire will have difficulty finding uh, the right mares. So that's why Capulet didn't make it. She was just, to me, it's a risk. 
knowing that walnuts were going to be expensive, uh, well, they were. I mean, Lexington, they went crazy on walnuts. And I had people call me up, why didn't you like this walnut? Why didn't you like this walnut? And I tried to explain it to them. I said, like, as a first crop sire with no evidence from any other sire that his pedigree will work as a sire, I can't recommend them. They all look good too, Norman. They went for high prices. Yeah, I know. I, I agree with but you. I'll, I'll let somebody else take the risk the first year. I agree. Like that. I wouldn't take the risk. Not for the very, price. Very difficult cross. Yeah. So we'll see what happens, as they say. The last fellow that said we'd see what happens, he, he just got fired. <laughs> ex <laughs> ex <-president. laughs> Not a good thing to say. Let's see what happens. You got to do something. You got to make a decision. You can't just buy it and let's see what happens. You got to make a decision before that. Is it the right thing to do? Pass. There's lots more in this sale I can buy. Norm, I had a I had a horse in the Lexington sale. I think we went over it last year, uh, or earlier this year. But um, we bought it back. It didn't bring much money, although it has a pretty good family. Because there's French blood in there, it's hard to tell. The name of the horse um, is Unleash the Titan. U N L E S L E S H. Unleash the Titan. It's a Neil Titan, out of quite possible. We had a nice, um, a nice full Dune Hill this year. That um, not in the top class, but one like nine out of ten uh, until she started breaking. Yeah, I got the revenue in there. But the revenue there, and it's a hard to cross this horse. Uh, I think she's in full. Who's the horse that um, went for eight hundred thousand a couple years ago and was horrible? Tactical and then, uh, landing. Tactical landing. We bred it to tactical landing this year, and tactical landing is a beautiful, beautiful sire. But I don't know how it's going to work out. But we, we actually, we Peter. I mean, actually, Peter, you're looking at a, a, a situation here that could well work. I mean, well, we throw the Valley Victory on top and bottom and the Speedy Crown, but. Yeah, it's, know got, what to do. it's got the, the double speedy crown maternally here. And so it is a top and bottom pedigree. And regardless of what else is up here, you've got that going for you. Well, where's the speedy crown down below? Oh, I see it. I see it. Yeah, there's, I got it. There's speedy crown, speedy crown. By the way, he's a gorgeous. I thought he'd go for at least 75, 80,000. Yeah, well, and I mean, it, I wouldn't give up on him. And here you got a Florida broke cross here. We got them both. We brought them back. In yeah, fact, Ronnie Burke went into him. So, no, I uh, it, take a I, look at the new cross there and, and see. I mean, no, I how could you kept them? How could you how could you decipher with the revenue? Because revenue hasn't been a great broodmare sire. Who to go for in the future? How would you, in your mind, look at it and say, okay, here's a good here's a good match besides Titan? Well, revenue was a spotty sire, as you can imagine. But when he had a good one, he had some great ones. But as a broodmare sire, it wasn't too good. Yeah, but there's one thing that that mare's got going for you that we haven't talked about, and that's the maternal family, and that's the maternal family of Mr. Muscle Man. And I want to tell you, that isn't a bad maternal family. No, <laughs> not at all. I mean, you, you got Rodney here. <laughs> And Valley Victory here. So this mare is a double with Mario Paris, this one here. And she had, bad, fact, she had bad ankles, otherwise she would have made a lot more fact, money. Quite possible as a double to Mario Paris because Shooter Kane Hanover's got Super Bowl maternally. So there's nothing wrong with the maternal family here. And so you just might be onto something, and uh, you could well have the best one in New York this year, Peter. That could be interesting. But as but your 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 point is that because of revenue, people didn't want it, um, and maybe there's not a whole lot to show for revenue here as a broodmare star so far. But beautiful, beautiful uh, video, but, really yeah, nice looking. Uh, that, that would be the case because you're right. I saw him. I watched him. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. I watched him. Well, what's wrong with him? Look, look at this. Is broodmare sire for revenue? Six thirty, five seventy-five. Mind you, there's no million-dollar ones, but 
but he's a you know they over a hundred thousand five percent that to me didn't uh, look too high this was a, a cadaver one here No, I uh, think he might still have a shot there. I mean, he, he produced some. Uh... Of course, he's, he has quite a view over in uh, Sweden. These best ones are all over here. Market share. So see what happened there. It'd be interesting to see. Here's a situation that you run into a lot uh, on trotters in particular. Here you have a sire that has no speedy crown maternally at all. So what's the best way to breed a horse like this? Breed it a mare that's line bred or inbred to speedy crown. This is line bred and inbred to speedy crown. Also has an Emily pride across the pedigree, so that helps. So. Market chair, had, you know, it was, it was very much an outcross situation maternally, but it's a good outcross. You don't have to have it inbred, inbred like this. Here's a situation where you have a pedigree with no speedy crown. Now, speedy crowns are arguably the biggest influence in pedigrees, in trotting pedigrees, as a sire or as a broodmare sire, or and his sons, and his. Uh, descendants like Valley Victory. So here's an opportunity to pump some speedy crown into this pedigree and it worked. But you won't find sires like that over here other than revenue or you bring another French sire over here. Here's one here that has no speedy crown. This is no speedy crown. So this is all there's a couple of Axworthy lines in here, something else that you don't see very often. Uh, there's no Axworthy at all up here, but you get a Super Bowl line, you get Star Sprite, Star Sprite. I don't know what made it work. But there was some maternal connection here and here. You can see some X Factor stuff here too. So when you're dealing with a sires like this that are French on the top, and American on the bottom, you, you have to try to get as much of this stuff in the mayor as possible because you're obviously not going to find this. And if you can, that, that was the opposite to the first one. There was a speedy crown, but. But he had five millionaires. So that was pretty decent. But here's another one inbred to speedy crown. And again, got this star sprite line here. Here's another one, same thing. And again, the Neverly Pride line. So you're bringing back, you're doubling back Speedy Crown and you're bringing back at least one line to the maternal line of revenue. That seemed to be the formula for him. Worked very well for him. Every sire has a profile and that was his. Whether it was predictable or not, it certainly showed up early enough that you would, uh, you'd have to follow it the rest of the, the, rest of the time. But. If you're going to, if you're when does high. when does an outcross really when is it really desirable, especially with the narrowing of the families, uh, in in both pacers and trotters, especially trotters. Well, uh, revenue was an outcross sire, obviously a different sire line from anything in, in North America. Mm -hmm. um, so is that beneficial, Norm, in your mind? No, the, yeah, absolutely. Not to that extent necessarily, but because you still have to have some commonality maternally. We're talking, uh, you're talking outcross with respect to sire line. Yeah. And, I, and the pedigree matching is based on two basic, two basic uh, premises, outcrossing on sire line and inbreeding maternally. And you have to do them both. Now you can get away with line breeding as they call it, 
where you have the same sire line, for instance, revenue is not a good one to show, but obviously Muscle Hill. You can get away from line breeding on sire line. If you also have the proper maternal inbreeding, strong enough maternal inbreeding, or a pattern like this. Um, Muscle Hill, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of his top 20 are line bred. Uh, this is a Speedy Smalley, and a Speedy Smalley, the same, same mare. Um, so, one, two, three, four, five, six of them out of the top 20 are Valley of Victory, or sons of Valley of Victory. And Muscle Hill, the grandson of Valley of Victory. So they're line bred. Three by three. See here? Now, Historically, certainly in Pacers, that is not a, that doesn't work very often. In Trotters, you, all, you only have to go back to Speedy Crown himself and his sons to see uh, how that sort of thing works in Trotters. Here's Muscle Janky, four by two to Speedy Crown, as was Don Rail, as was. Jackie Glide, uh, as was a number of the, the top ones by Valley Victory, or four by two to speed, line bred. But the thing is, the rest of the pedigree here is Nova Victory, Star Sprite, Star Sprite, <coughs> and a Scotland there. So this is a this is this is a <coughs> lots of maternal inbreeding to offset this this line breeding. <clears throat> so, and it's actually four by two is three by, inside three by three, um, or, or three, three and three is six, four and two is six. That's the way they used to look at inbreeding. Inbreeding was some, when you were inside of three by three, like two by three or three by two or whatever. Uh, so it, you can step outside that you can step inside that to a certain extent. You can go three by three, but three by two would be pushing it. Four by two, obviously, in trotters is not. So, and obviously three by three is not pushing it. It's, it seems to be acceptable. But as I say, <clears throat> you seem to be able to get away with that with trotters, but not necessarily with bases. <clears throat> now there are some, a couple of pacers that, as, as I talked about last week, uh, that do indeed have some su su success breeding three by three on uh, <coughs> Western Hanover, but uh, that is not that is not common by any means. Norm, Norm, I'm going to give you a really wild one that I had that I bred last year just because uh, where I had her, the person wanted an inbreeder. Sassy Cindy, take a look at this pedigree. And she's fast. S A S S Y Cindy. I mean, this is something that goes against anything that we'll ever do, but. Well, Phyllis can get away with it. She's apparently, really. Apparently inbreeding, I mean. But is, is this land bred? Let me have a look here. She's inbred two by two. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she may be the fastest uh, young one we've had in, in 10 years. She won her first race in 54 at, at um, Hoosier. And um, she was a late foal, so we didn't push her hard. But she might turn out to be really, really good. It was just like a whim because of the big well, tanner. It's certainly not something that uh, 
I mean, here's good time, good time, and Annihilator and Annihilator, and there's two big towners up here and two arts places down out of uh, Western and Abercrombie. I mean, there's some connection maternally. maternally. And of course, you have a big towner, uh, she being yeah. a Philly, she's X Factor inbred to Big Towner and Mar Market Parish. So uh, that sort of thing can tend to offset. Offset this sort of thing. What happens? Basically, read, what happens? What tends to happen when you read this way? Um, conventional wisdom is that you're risking doubling up on faults in the sarla <coughs> when you read Crow. <coughs> now, I don't know if Art Major had any particular major faults that he's passed along to his foals. I'm not aware of them. The certain sires have, but it's always been. Uh, a thing in breeding that you don't, I mean, three by three is okay, but two by two would be stretching. Oh, yeah. yeah we, we just stretching the risk here. She, she was pacing nope. at two days and but she's again, nasty. You're, yeah, you got a, a Margaret Parish X Factor in breeding on a Philly. That's enough to turn the table on that one. Can you take a look at She's EC Breezy? Chief? She's EC Breezy. Cheese. Yeah, I think this is staring in between the. Easy, breezy. Easy breezy. Cheese, apostrophe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't put it in there. Ah. Don't put apostrophes in there. In the, in the, okay, then you will find it. Yeah. Uh, cheese, easy. Yeah, easy breezy. B R double E. Set why? Yeah. So this one I bought a couple of years ago and just take a look at her mother fresh face because she's three because this is a two and three on the victory. Line bread. Yeah. No particular uh, pet, uh, pedigree pattern. So it's a, you know, some good stuff in the pedigree here. This is a fresh face. This is her mother. And she has a good one here, by Yankee Glide, similar situation there. So this is a- this the, I think they made, tried to make, this is a make full four sister. or five. Yeah. So this is a full sister, this one. Yeah. Hmm. That looks like something that Kentuckiana there and Tom Crouch was trying back 10 years, 10, 15 years ago. He was breeding Yankee Glide to a bunch of Mr. Vic mares. And that looks like that's one of them. Yeah. Let's see how it worked out. If there's a few of them around. Some days the mic is uh, sending me some funny noises. Background information. Sounds like somebody making announcements. Anyway, here they are. It's been tried 35 times. Three good ones. Yeah. And one of them is fresh, and one out of fresh face. So statistically, it's a, it's a big risk. Yeah, it was so, yeah. It did work and two of the three were fillies. Uh, this one was a call. Uh, fairly, it can work for, as I say, uh, close in breeding doesn't necessarily, or line breeding doesn't necessarily hurt fillies. Hmm. 
There's personal style and Mr. Vic. And the bonefish line working. Here's the bonefish line up here. So there, there's some maternal connections here across the pedigree maternally that make it work. Obviously, X factor, the speedy crown, is going to help your chances on a filly. So I, like all the rules, all the rules of thumb that you use, there are exceptions. They're never hard and fast. But rules of thumb generally tend to have a high percent, uh, is a, are, are based on high percentage situations. So there's, and, and you all know as breeders that this is a, a breeding is not a 100%, it's not zero. It's always somewhere, something in between. And you're just trying to get the best percentage you can. So if you go with low percentage situations like this, then you either get lucky or you don't. Uh, if <clears throat> this cross was 25%, you got your one or four chance, but it's not. So you dodged a bullet. Didn't dodge it the second time. But the filly, although being a filly possibly might have been better than a colt in that situation, she hasn't made that kind of money, no. I have a look at a couple of these other ones that, uh, that sold uh, high. Uh, here's one, Boudoir Hanover. A boudoir Hanover is a uh, Captain Treacherous. Fairly typical in some ways to the, the Captain Treacherous, uh, the good Captain Treacherouses, with one exception. There's no Abercrombie line here. There's, an, there's, and that is something that shows up in Captain Treacherous's uh, <coughs> uh, profile. I think 19 of the top 20 have an Abercrombie line in them. So um, that one wouldn't make my list, although there is an Adios line down here in Shady Character. I prefer to see the uh, Abercrombie line up in here. But also, another feature of Captain Treasure we can show his, uh, maybe we can show his um, profile here. <clears throat> Again, profiles are all about percentages. You're looking for a pattern in a profile that that is obvious or relevant to the majority of his best. Doesn't have to be in every one. But here's the Abercrombie line, boom, boom, boom. Where it's not shown, there's a big towner. Boom, 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 boom. There's a big towner. Two, three, four, five, Hello? six, seven, eight. Yes. Pretty much all. Today. Fine, great. Um, just wanted to make sure we're still on track for three o'clock. Is that still okay? Uh, you're, Doug, you're, you're, everybody in the world can hear you, Doug. Okay, thanks All for right. calling. You're welcome. Bye bye. Shut off your phone or shut off your mic. Okay, so you can see another thing, another aspect of Captain Treacherous is best is a situation that you see in a lot of top stars today. It's, it's probably not going to be as prominent in the future because they're kind of slipping off the table. Are these Sons of Metaskipper or Albatross lines? Albatross line, Son of Metaskipper, Albatross line. Um, not here, this is the Dragon's Lair. This is, this, the Dragon's Lairs were kind of outliers to me. On the, uh, on the profile, but they're part of the profile now because there's at least two of them. But <clears throat> other than that, if you go down through here, uh, here's Annihilator, uh -huh. on the table, 
Sun Sam, most happy fellow, albatross, annihilator, 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 so forth. So to me, that was a kind of a significant aspect of Captain Treacherous's profile was the presence of this. There's another one down here. And there are exceptions, obviously, but about 14 of the 20 in total have that as a component in their profile. And in particular, the top three, the three millionaires have that. So uh, it's obviously, to, to me, I was looking at when I'm looking at Captain Treacher, says, I'm trying to find something that will make a million dollars. So those two aspects of the pedigree are, to me, key to getting one of the best ones, especially if I'm paying a lot of money for them. And this particular mayor doesn't have it, but they, they spent 200000 <clears throat> They may well get one that makes three or $400,000, but there's none on the, on the list here. Let me see. Um, there's an American ideal. It's got art space. So there no, there's only one American ideal on this list. One out of American ideal mayor. That's this one here. And it's got the arts place comedy at present. Um, and if you go back and look at all of the other ones down below here, maybe the first one that you come across is, has made $100,000. I don't know where it is, down here somewhere. But there probably is one. But you've just paid 200000 for a, a, a horse that doesn't show up in the, in the top, uh, whose pedigree is not typical of the ones that are in this top 20. To me, that's a risk, doesn't make it on the list. Probably a, had good numbers. Look at the one Burke bought for, or David McDuffie bought for 375. What was his name? Energetic. 93, Energy. number 93. Yeah. You already talked about that, Noam. I called you on him. Yeah, you did, yeah. Um, energetic camera. Yeah. <clears throat> well said. Let me go back to this uh, profile again. There's a well said out of a mayor that's inbred to Abercrombie on the top 20. This is not inbred to Abercrombie. It's a well said out of Beach Towel. It made 100,000. Um, I think uh, in explaining why he bought this, he was talking about Ginger and Fred and Fred and Ginger being out of the mayor down here, I think. Yeah. And justified his purchase on that basis. Yeah. They were by a uh, real really? artist. Uh, the well said's out of that mayor were nothing special. But the real artist, you know, obviously, was, and there's another Abercrombie line there, but three of the top four were Abercrombie line. You can, we can check the, the, the cross well said to Captain, there must be a few of them out there. <clears throat> yeah, many there are. 111, six of them. Well, not that many, there's 11 and there's two good ones. Full brother and sister. Yeah, full brother and sister. So there's one pedigree that worked, the rest of these didn't. 
So to, again, go back to that situation. No, there is not a whole lot of statistics to, statistic to prove the cross. And this cross, this particular mayor is not the same. The mother of this one is not the same as the one you're looking at. And also in here, uh, there's not even a Meadow Skipper, Sun, June Lanux lines. Doesn't qualify on that other aspect of it, of having a Meadow Skipper, Sun, or Albatross line maternally. That's not there. To me, that's a risky pedigree for Captain Treacherous, and certainly not worth that kind of money. But Maybe Ginger and Fred will come through for them. I don't know. But you're looking back in the pedigree at something that's entirely different from what this is. Ginger and Fred is by an Abercrombie line sire. But anyway, at, uh, to each his own. So that's energetic. Uh, I hope he lives up to his name. Another one, there's another $200,000 one here, gracefully Hanover. Oh. Keep typing this in the wrong spot here. I think this is a chapter seven, $200,000 track chapter seven. Um, no victory line, sire. There's an over victory down here, so, but it's not a TV. Um, speedster, over victory, speedster, star sprite, speedster, star sprite. No noble victory in here. Pine chip, no pine chip down here. It's not a double double. So it's got nothing special going for it in that respect. Down there is Demon Glory, nothing here. No Margaret Parish. There isn't Cadabra. And there isn't Demification. So she's double to Margaret Parish, so that helps. But what's the cross percentage? Two good ones out of 13. Any cadaver balanced images out of there? No, that's a cat. A cadaver out of a speedy crown Super Bowl. Well, there's a Nova Victory line, double Nova Victory line, maternally. You won't find too many of them around. I guess you might say it's somewhat like it, although it's not this is balanced, balanced image here, this is Angus Hall. It's a different branch of Nova Victory. But. Anyway, I wasn't impressed with the cross situation. Um, the dam herself, I don't know what she looks like. Good blue chip. Ah. Did I miss this one? There's a full sister. Margaret Parrish must have come through for that one.
number is that? Base filling. One, one, two. I'm on the wrong. Well, that's, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. That's, a, that's the one that's up here, the second best one. The Grace Frilly one is the one I'm looking at here. That's the one I want to check the mid dam on. I'm looking at the dam on the one that was good. <clears throat> but here's uh, the dam. Well, she's decent. There's the chapter seven here. No confirmation really that the cadaver mare, there's no cadaver mares here. That, I mean, she's obviously, she has a couple of good ones. It's an Andrew overhaul. He won the Hamiltonian by, by disqualification. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. That's probably what, what pumped these, what, what pumped up the price on this one here. Yeah. But that's a different breed. Yeah. An overhaul, not a chapter seven. Oh, that's the sort of thing that um, pumps up prices, though. I mean, a connection to a stakes winner come popping up in the pedigree uh, just before the sale or in the year before the sale. Um, obviously, is a plus and a lot of people's minds and would be more so if it was a full brother or sister that was coming through here, but that's not the case here. <clears throat> this is not a full brother or sister to anything that's been any good. So pedigree wise or in that particular family. So again, that's a risk reward thing. If you could buy it for 20,000, you might take a chance, but 200,000 to me was a, a bit deep. Uh, what else we got here? Contact zone. This is, there weren't that many high price ones. Really, it was, a, uh, I think Paul was, uh, Sears was quoted as it saying it was a good middle sale, which means there's a lot of horses sell between 50 and 150 sort of thing. Which is good for the, the, the breeders because uh, more often than not, uh, some of these sales tend up to be, <clears throat> everybody goes for the big ones and then they got no money to buy the decent ones that are cheaper. Well, they're not interested in them. But the shortage of really good quality horses at the top end of the sale obviously forces people to look a little deeper. Here's the better's diet. I think this is a cross situation here with American Ideal. Norm, is there a way of telling from the program year by year uh, what percentage of, say, better's delights are still making it? Well, you can look that up on a yearly basis. You can get uh, his, his folds in any particular year. That's one way of doing it. Right, but you have to do it manually. You can't, uh, it won't tell you. Like for 2018, Better Delight still produced so many or, or yeah, 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 well that's, uh, there's no other way than doing a couple of clicks to do it. You can, yeah. You can go here and you can do top stars, North America, Pacers, within the year, 2017. Search, better is the light of number two. I like this. Better is the light of number two. That's in the three-year-olds. How is he in the two-year-olds?
is number seven. That's in terms of average winnings uh, based on polls of racing age. And so he had 120 falls in total, but uh, these are the fall the average earnings of the falls of racing, racing age. So the beach is still there and he's gone now. <laughs> he was gone too soon. And that's another way of doing it on a year by year basis. You probably good find features. that light on top of the pack or within the top three for the last 10 years you go back through it. The Art Major made a comeback. He's down under now, right? Yeah. Doing, does very well in, in Australia. If these horses are old, when do you, when do you, in your experience, when do you start to shy away from these older horses, uh, stallions? Well, you shy away from them when they stop popping them out. I mean, most sires <laughs> are all done after five years. Um, guys just keep popping them. But so I'm sure they're not getting all the mares they did back then. It's, it's all about the, their maternal lines, as far as I can tell. If you if, if a sire has a maternal line that's open to a lot of a lot of mares, with a fairly simple maternal line like Better's Delight, Abercrombie Meadow Skipper, Abercrombie Meadow Skipper, tons of mares have Abercrombie Meadow Skipper, tons of mares of Albatross or sons of Abercrombie in them. Uh, that's a connection that you've been uh, that you've been able to make ever since. Well, Abercrombie goes back a ways now, and Albatross goes back a ways now. Sixty eight. And Abercrombie's 75. Yet there's all kinds of mares. Here's Abercrombie. Here's Albatross. Abercrombie. They can make a connection to Better's Delight. And this is 2019. Not that it helped this, uh, helps this one particularly, but because the Albatrosses, although they're X Factor Albatrosses, it's not, uh, there's no Metascript or Sun or Albatross line to, to hook onto here. Yeah. And if you look at the, uh, if you look at the, uh, Golden <clears throat> Cross, I think it's, uh, Across here for uh, that was light and American ideal. There are 33 of racing age, and he's got three good ones. Now, does that justify paying 175000 for one of them? I don't think so. Not unless it looks like here's the only one that's made 175 or more. to see in this one either. It's an Adios line, not an Abercrombie, so it's made 200,000 for whatever reason. Probably a lifetime, he's a five-year-old. So anyway, it's not a, not a particularly potent cross as you can see. So again, it's a high-risk situation for me, so I didn't make the list. And somebody paid 175000 for it. Of course, there weren't that many better lights available this year, so <clears throat> and winning a couple of Breeders' Crowns kind of helps you stir the interest. I had two or three people call me up for a list of available better lists, better lights, and which ones I liked. Maybe they were all competing on this one. I bet he wasn't on the list, but I don't know. And then here's uh, 
one called the winner take it all. Good names. Some people are attracted to, it's funny, some people are attracted to names too, regardless of what the horse looks like. <laughs> It's a muscle hill. Doesn't fit the pattern, does it? It's not that there's no double speedy crown down here. That of a self possessed mare. It's got a Super Bowl, it's got a noble victory. It's not a noble victory, a valley victory. So <clears throat> it kind of shapes up like it might be a, a double double pedigree, but there must be something wrong with it here that I saw. Uh, right now. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fumbles. And um, only one good one by Don Otto, the rest of them basically nothing. When you do the numbers on something like this, <clears throat> you're up to the ninth fall. This is a, a, a so the rating drops off pretty well. Um, this mare was a similar kind of a mare, one good one and a whole bunch of nothing. And the daughters produced nothing. Another one here had one good one, partially good one, daughters produced nothing. Now there's you know, really not a very strong pedigree. Certainly not, the, it's a muscle hill. <clears throat> Everybody thinks that muscle hill can just wave his wand and it's poof, you got a winner. Like this guy, the winner take it all, but he has bad ones too. And he may well have had a good one out of a self-possessed mare. But whether it had this kind of stuff below it, I don't know. It's the whole mare that counts. <clears throat> So there's the self-possessed success rate, 8.8%. So it's it's a cross percentage problem, <clears throat> also a, a pedigree pattern problem. So it, uh, <clears throat> and here's the best one, self-possessed, a speedster. Uh, double up in the. Yeah, but the mare's inbred three by three to Valley Victory. That's what you're looking for. Aren't three you? by four. Yeah. Yeah. You're not necessarily looking for that, but I mean, it, 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 this particular cross of self possessed and Muscle Hill is basically a failure. There are three good ones out of 32. Yeah. So, <clears throat> really, very risky situation. At a buck fifty, <laughs> and so for <clears throat> hundred fifty, hundred fifty thousand, yeah. So somebody liked the name. <laughs> okay, we're getting close to uh, curfew here. My curfew is four o'clock on Sunday afternoon because we have to go out. We usually go and visit uh, one of our sons or to go out for dinner. So uh, if you get any other questions that we want to cover here? Hey, Norman, if anybody has access to Blood Horse, the newest issue has a good article on some of the myths we talked about on inbreeding and some of the things like that. So if anybody has access to this week's Blood Horse, a yeah. good article. That's on thoroughbreds. 
Yeah, so thoroughbred, but it actually mentions standard breads in the article. Uh, maybe they're talking about, <clears throat> let me go, I, I, I said I would have a look at some thoroughbred for you. I'm gonna show you some. Because <clears throat> I was quite amazed to see uh, that 14 out of the 15 uh, of the Breeders' Cup winners were either TB, there were 10 of them, or they were double doubles, there were four of those. So let's have a look at some, a uh, couple of them anyway. This particular filly might have been the subject of the uh, article, I don't know. Because she's owned by a standard bad owner, standard bad owners. Uh, Mr. Hetrick in Delaware is one of them. And, uh, John Fielding. and John Fielding in Ontario. Her name is Rushing Fall, and she's got two and a half million made. She finished second, I believe, in the Breeders' Crown. She just got beat at the wire, or a Breeders' Cup. So this is what you see when you look at it. <clears throat> and what do you see? Basically, here's the sire lines, the Niarco line. This is the Mr. Prospector line. Uh, and, uh, the E actually also is basically the same as uh, Niarco. It goes back to uh, it goes back to the same sire line, but but you can see there's a N S E N here and an N S. And here, I think. That's the S line, that E. Okay. But what you have here is the Niarco line and the Mr. Prospector line bred to a mare. That's Niarco, Mr. Prospector. And so this is a. It's, fairly typical, and there's the Northern Dancer line down here again too. But this is fairly typical of, uh, of what you would see in uh, uh, a standard bread. And you go up here, and this is the Arco line up here. And uh, so this is a, what you call a line bread to the Arco, but the Arco is well off the page by now. So these are, although it's line bread to the same sire line, they're distant. So that's a fairly typical um, situation, but you very seldom see prospector and Niarco and Niarco prospect, prospectors. Uh, <clears throat> they tend to stay away from doing things like that, but that's a, this is a standard, what I would call a standard red style pedigree. It's not particularly, a, a, it's almost a, a, a double double, but not quite. It just depends on how far back you go on these sire lines. Um, I'll put from the I guess I don't have it here downstairs. But anyway, uh, if well, one thing I, I noticed <clears throat> when I started hunting through, I wanted to look and see how various. Uh, what the profile for various stars were. And I was looking for this double double pedigree. This is my origin for it, was basically the thoroughbreds. So, uh, I'm sorry, the TB pattern pedigree. So my, I looked at horses like Secretariat to see what the patterns were.
secretary at this, uh, let me see, take this one, put it up here. He's in Niarco. Yeah, again, he was wine bread in Niarco. <clears throat> and Niarco down here again, too. Even his pedigree was interesting because of his maternal line, basically, which was loaded with long distance runners and top quality maternal influences. So it's a little, it's, but uh, this particular one, again, what am I seeing here? Not a whole lot. This E line, I think this is the one I'm looking at. Maybe this is the sorry I was looking at. But I saw a lot of high percentage of them were well, like this. This particular sire line is, um, no. Oh, I, here it is, okay. Here's the maternal lines here. These are all the same, these are all the E lines. Go back to equipoise or something like that. This black, these black ones. You see a fairly dominant influence of these, these lines all the way up through the pedigree. So they're being doubled up. So there's a, there is this, uh, you can detect somewhat of a pattern there with respect to uh, the mares that he does best with. And a lot of them have, are, out of, are by brood mare sires that have his maternal line right here, his uh, sire line right here, or back in here or in here. <laughs> They're not as obvious as, uh, I'm trying to think, I'm not used to working with these thoroughbreds so much. Um, I think this one's one maybe that sort of. Okay, yeah, we're going to set these up. Oh, there's some other stuff. Jump again. Go ahead, look at it. Why? Yes, and I even have another pile. We can just shred it. Because I don't know. You know how we used to bring all this stuff to us? Mm -hmm. Scab Daddy has a Niarco line, which is red. As you can see here, you got one, two, three, double, yeah, the top TV patterns. Another one here, another one here, another one here. Another one here, another one here. Here, 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 here. Well, this is a sire that. How many, what? How many years? Seven. Very strongly TV pattern. Move the white table back before you go. And Dennis, then Dennis, yeah. your mic is on. No, no, it takes us two seconds. Keep watching, honey. No, that's right. I'm listening. <laughs> I don't want to be listening. <laughs> well, we'll get in trouble. <laughs> Got your wife there just as well as she was dressed in a dentist. <laughs> so this is an interesting uh, pattern for Scat Daddy, one of the most popular sires. He was, he's produced a lot of good ones. And um, they're basically line bred or inbred, a lot of them, to the, the New York line, which is part of his own maternal line. So I'd be interested to read that article and see what they're picking up on. I know I've corresponded with a couple of people and pointed out this sort of thing to them. Maybe that's kind of bouncing around in somebody's mind. Anyway, we're at 3.59, so I'm going to call it the day. Uh, we'll, uh, unless otherwise notified, we'll convene again next Sunday. I want to look at some of the new SARS that, are, uh, that have been announced. Of course, we have Tall Dark Stranger and Pappy Rob going to Hanover. Uh, Cattle Wash is going to uh, Stud. Uh, we got Green Man Alishi going to uh, 
Tyra Hills in Ontario. Not, I don't know of any other trotters so far, but. Uh, yeah, you got propulsion coming to Dio Valeni because they're moving tricks into the wind back in Canada. Yeah, okay. Propulsion to Dio Valeni. Um, nerved heels and all. <laughs> yeah. No bar, they don't bar them from that. We're doing that in here in, 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 in North America, apparently. It doesn't affect his semen. <laughs> I, I think he's, I think propulsion, he's got some falls, hasn't he? Also, this is uh, the oh, wrong spelling. Or no, I'm in, no, I'm in the wrong. I'm in the wrong database. <laughs> yeah. Just a quick look at them here. He was popular over there. He bred a lot of mares. And I think they're all being disqualified from. Uh, let me do it here. <clears throat> Perhaps there's none of them to the races yet. There should be. Now, he's got yearlings this year. Yeah. See, he's uh, maternally, he's uh, Nova Victory's speedy crown. And he's a son of uh, Muscle Hill. Yeah. So again, if I was looking for propulsion yearlings, uh, I may look at this one because it is a double double. Uh, may look at this one because it also is a double double. Look at this one because it's a TV. No, 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 no. Uh, perhaps. Perhaps. I hear to pray along. I'm not sure whether he's a Peter Scott line through Sam Williams or he's a Speedy Crown line. I think he's maybe Speedy Crown line. No, he's at Sam Williams line. It goes back to Speedy, Peter Scott, but, yeah. but it, that wouldn't qualify him. And this one, this one, maybe this one would. This one, no, no. Nah. Well, there's an Arnie Speedster, Speedy Crown. This is Speedy Speedy. Arnie Speed, Speedy Crown again. Arnie Speedy Crown again. These ones that are Arnie Speedy Crown, I would say they're kind of toss ups, but uh, I prefer to go for one of these. But there are some here um, on this list. There's probably, there's another one, another one there, uh, another one there. So there's a dozen or so, maybe as many as 20. He's got quite a few falls. Yeah. And there are definitely some that are worth looking at. Yep. If you follow the pattern for Sons of Hustle Hill. So anyway, that's it for now. Uh, we'll be looking at propulsion next week and uh, I'll get an update on his uh, situation. Uh, I don't know, I guess it won't, there's none of those 219 falls racing, that's for sure, but uh, they were very popular and I think some of them sold in the, the Elite Lop sale uh, for decent money. So thanks again for joining, and uh, we'll see you next week, hopefully. Yep. Thank you, Norm. Thanks, 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 Norm. Thanks so much. Thanks, Norm. You're welcome.